Now, I haven't flown the drone since I got it back from DJI. They sent me a new one or a refurbished one. I don't know their process, but probably gonna need to update the firmware and get all that sort of stuff ready before I fly because no point getting out there and not being able to use it. This is my workbench. Woo! Look at that. So I've got the, uh, everything's got a bit of a cutout. Got the A7R4, the A7S3, that's my 1635. That's where my 24 mil, which I'm filming on right now, goes on. 2470, 35 mil, 85, 90, Lauer Probe, 70, two times converter. The drone just sits there at the moment, but you notice there's a gap here, there's a gap here and a gap here. That's gonna be the 50 mil F1.2. That's gonna be a 200 to 600. Who knows what that's for? <laughs> that might just stay being the, uh, the Mavic Pro 2 for now, but also, this is my charging station. This is a, another mini, uh, mini workbench sort of thing, but I, um, I've converted, so I've got a few different power boards in the back and we drilled a hole in the back so then down there the power point charges all this stuff and I can, when the drone batteries are on charge, I can just chuck it all the way, all my batteries are charging, happy days. So while that goes ahead and uh, updates itself, what we're gonna be doing today is a bit of macro photography. I'm gonna take out the 90 mil G macro and the 85. The 85 is not a macro, but I wanna show you kind of the difference between a macro and a non-macro lens. Also gonna be taking out the 24 mil Pro lens because that is a macro and that thing is wild. <laughs> but today I, want, I definitely wanna go shoot some hoops first. And in the meantime, what do you think of the uh, new hoodies? This is my, my work brand, this is N Media House. I've got a little branding on the back and just the uh, Super 8 skull on the front there. If I got to a point where people were interested, would you like this as merch without the branding on the back? I've got a whole bunch of different colors. I think they look awesome, so let me know. Anyway, let's go shoot some hoops, then let's go do some macro photography. Bloody drone, come on! <laughs> So I ended up spending way more time playing basketball than I expected because I got carried away. I'm sure you probably saw how I got carried away. Oh, this guy's done a nice little, little burnout here. And um, I think, well, it's 1.30 now. I've probably got time to go home, have a bit of food, get the camera gear ready, and go do what we actually came here to do. Shoot some macro. So we don't have too long before the uh, sun's probably not too visible for us because classic me, I got a little bit uh, caught up with my trick shots of basketball and didn't leave myself. And oh shit, man, it is muddy out here. Get a load of that. Fun times. So classic me didn't really leave enough time because I got caught up playing with uh, the old basketball trick shots and then realized that because of where this hill that I'm at is, it's on the other side of some other hills, so I've probably got like an hour until the sun's like properly set. So, but this this last time we were here, this was all trees and it's since, let's, let me just uh, do the one of these. It's since all been logged, so I don't know if they use this for paper or if it's just, I don't know what purposes they might, I don't know much about trees and what they do when they get cut down, I assume paper, but. I think a lot of people get confused between close-up photography and macro photography. Traditionally, a macro lens will have a one-to-one -one ratio, and that means when you're taking a photo of something, it will appear on the image sensor at the exact same size as it is in real life. If you're shooting on a crop body DSLR, Canon, or Nikon, there's a strong chance you probably might have an all-in-one zoom that says it does macro. Now, that's not gonna be a true macro lens. It's gonna have closer focusing uh, capabilities than some other lenses. This is probably gonna be like a one to two or less than that. That means if it's one to two, it's gonna appear half the size it actually is in real life on that sensor. It's a little bit eerie in the forest, no one around, it's kinda of cool. <laughs> and you can actually get specialty lenses, which are two to one. 
and two to one ratio means that something is gonna appear two times the size on the sensor than what it actually is in real life. Macro lenses will traditionally have closer focus as well. Today I brought the 85 G Master and the 90 Macro to put those side to side to kind of give you a bit more of a comparison of what macro is and what a normal lens doing close up photography is, because it's quite different. And I also brought the probe lens, like I said, which is a bit more unique, but I'm gonna keep walking because there's some real nice uh, moss on these rocks here, but the sun's over that side and I wanna get it before it goes. And I reckon probably got like 20 minutes. <laughs> and I wanna get the drone up too. All right, let's go. Now it's important to remember when we're shooting macro photography, most of these lenses are gonna be more of a telephoto. So a 90mm, a 105, a 200 or something like that. Now when we're shooting at those lengths, our depth of field is gonna be razor thin, especially if we're shooting at 2.8. So it is important to get as much light as we can get in so we can stop our lens down to something like F16 or F11, F22, depending on your scenario and what you're shooting. Which is why these bloody frogs, ain't you? Sounds like a creaky bed. Which is why I had it on my list of things to bring and completely forgot is to bring a remote shutter Because this means if you do need to slow your shutter speed down You can trigger your camera that way and you're not gonna bump your camera Now what you can do of course is obviously set your timer in your camera two seconds click the button take your hand off Hopefully the wobbling stops get your shot nice and crisp now when we are shooting something Let's say we're shooting a bug and it's flying around we want it down at like f16 But we also want our shutter speed at like 1 400th or something like that it's gonna be pretty hard to do that unless we have bright sun baking on the object. It's probably not gonna be very flattering. That's why you might introduce a flash or some sort of light. Now the thing that makes the probe lens so unique other than the fact of its design and how it works, it actually has LEDs built in on the end of that. So you just plug in a little battery pack and get some really cool shots. But enough talking for now. I think we've got about five more minutes of the walk and then we'll uh, start taking some shots. This wasn't here last time. Pretty sad seeing all the uh, trees get knocked down, but I, I just had a bit of a thought, like this area's been pretty badly hit by um, bushfires over the past few years. And I wonder if this is a bit of like a prevention method. If you know anything about trees and fires and <laughs> I don't know, let me know. Pretty nice little scene, hoping we can find a few different things to take some macro shots of. So here we have the Laowa probe lens. This is a 24 mil lens. Doesn't look like a standard 24 mil lens. This one's very unique because the way it focuses um, and the way it's structured, it can go all the way from a two to one macro, meaning things that um, will be displayed from this lens on the sensor will appear two times larger than in real life, all the way down to a one to four macro. So a quarter of the size of real life. This lens is very unique. It's actually waterproof for the first portion and it's also got LEDs, like I said, right there on the end. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it's very unique and it can actually focus on the front element. Whereas most lenses will have a you know, 20 centimeters, 30 centimeters focusing distance. This one can focus if it's touching the front element. So that's really cool. I've actually got the, uh, the Sigma MC11 adapter because I bought the Canon EF1 just in case I got a, a cine camera that wasn't E-mount because this is manual focus only. This is F14 all the way through to F40. When you are getting so close to things, you want to go with that deeper depth of field because it's, it's gonna be so thin anyway. That's just gonna you know, help get things in focus. However, when you're at F40 and you're trying to shoot something at you know, 1 400th of a second, do the math, you need a lot of light. And unfortunately, that sun's uh, not gonna be around for much longer. So probably gonna have to use the LEDs on this one. I'm probably gonna, I'll be real, I've stuffed up, I got here late. Probably gonna continue this at home afterwards anyway. And then over here, I have the 90 mil G. And now this one here is a one to one macro. Yeah, as you focus down, it goes all the way through one to 1 1.5, one to two, one to three, one to five, one to 10. Pretty versatile lens. This lens is also a super sharp lens. This one, the, the Pro lens is a very, uh, niche lens product videography and macro for like insects and bugs and stuff like that this one here This is a more versatile lens in the sense that you could use it as a portrait lens I know a lot of people use this instead of an 85 for like wedding shooters because then they can get their close detailed shots of the rings and the flowers and stuff like that But then also double it as the portrait lens. So on the side here. We've got a focus range selector We've got 28 centimeters through to 50 centimeters 50 to infinity and then just the full range now, if you're shooting something that's close to the camera, if you have it on that 28 centimeters to 50 centimeters, it's not gonna look for anything that's out of that range. So you're not gonna have to worry about the background, like 
distracting focus, very, very handy feature to have. And that's why if you're on like a 7200 or a 100 to 400, and you're shooting, let's say, planes uh, landing at an airport, and you're shooting through a cyclone fence, if you have it selected for that, like, I think it's about three meters onwards, the autofocus will never get distracted by that fence. So that's a pretty cool feature. This thing has optical steady shot, so that element inside the lens does float around to give us a more stable shot. Now, when you are trying to handhold this at 90 mil, trying to capture a moving bug or a flower uh, blowing in the breeze or something like that, can be quite difficult to, to capture. So having that steady shot is very, very handy. I am gonna be shooting on the A7R4 and what's really handy about that is this camera 61 megapixels. So if I can't get quite close enough to something, I can always crop in later and still have a fair bit of resolution left. Now for the small talk, let's, uh, let's get some photos. Now we've got a little toadstool down here which I wanna get a photo of, but the sun, I don't think it's gonna be coming out much the rest of the day, which is pretty annoying and you know, that's all mine, my fault and uh, I will be continuing this at home, no doubt, but I did bring myself a little LED panel just in case this was to happen. You don't always have to have the best flash gear to get good macro shots, but um, it does definitely help, so I've brought this trusty little LED along to try and get this shot. So when I was driving up, I was like, I'd really love to stick that probe lens into like a tree sap kind of hole in a tree. That's what she said. <clears throat> no. You little ripper, just found one. So it should be interesting, I might chuck the uh, LEDs on the front of it as well. So as you can see, I got the probe lens on here. Um, it does actually look pretty cool. We're actually really close. I don't know if you can uh, see on the back of the screen there, but we're really close to that sap. And I think what I'm gonna do, because it's such a vibrant, rich red, orangey color, and because of where the, uh, the lens itself is resting in the tree, it's actually darkening out that front portion of the screen. Oh, off the shot, sorry. So I think I'm gonna actually brush tool and darken the back and just have that red popping. That'd be pretty cool, I think. Now this is pretty cool because on this switch, we can actually raise the level and lower the level of light quite a bit. So if we have a look at our image here. Now obviously what I need to do, we're at 1 400th, I can, really slow that down a bit to 1 80th of a second that's starting to look a little bit better so unfortunately we missed the sun um it really screwed us up that's my fault for playing too much basketball and the worst bit is that we missed the sunset and to make that worse because of the time now and when i drive back that way i get stuck in peak hour traffic to get home so let's just uh skip all that all right so we're back here in the office and it's time to finally finish recording this video <laughs> So as you can see, we've got a few different things here as a bit of a set for us to do a little bit of macro photography at home. You can use whatever you want. There's heaps of cool things around the home that have really cool textures. You gotta shake this watch to uh, get it to tick. You just shake it back and forth. I just needed it to have five minutes of battery so we can get some ticking on the camera. So right now we're shooting at one to one and what that means is if we were to take this watch and put it on the center, this is exactly how big it would be in comparison to that sensor. And you'll see when we shoot at a different ratio, it won't look quite the same. And notice if I move this watch, look at just how shallow the depth of field is. Look at my thumb holding that watch completely out of focus. But if I move it back a little bit, and there my thumbnail starts to slightly come in focus. Four millimeters of difference, if that. So it's super fine depth of field. So that means if you are shooting a moving subject, a little jumping spider or something like that, you're going to want to shoot at a much lower f-stop, like f-16, f-11, something like that. But like I said before, you need lots of light to be able to do that. So right now, that's at a one to two ratio. So when we were at one to one, our minimum focus distance was 28 centimeters. Right now at one to two, we've had to move back out to 35 centimeters. Now this is a prime lens, so keep in mind there is no zoom, but because of the way the magnification works with the focus, when we are going through different ratios and going smaller, we actually do need to take things further away from us. Right now we're at a one to two. So if you have a look at that image and compare it to the previous one, this image is now half the size of what it is in real life. And for the next one, let's go one to five. So things are starting to look smaller again. And notice as we move the ratio, how much further away we are starting to get from our subject. Now let's chuck on the 85 mil and see the difference between a macro and a non-macro. Now what you notice, as from the 85, we had to move back even further, which is almost a little bit strange because the 90mm is actually 5mm, you know, more telephotos. This is technically a wider lens, but as you notice on this image, 
the watch is appearing smaller and smaller and smaller because we're not shooting at those macro ratios. So if there's one thing you take away from this, macro photography is going to make things appear true to life, real size, of what they are in relation to that sensor of the camera. Now we've got the 24 mil pro blends on here and things are starting to get pretty close and I've actually got it at two to one ratio, which means this part that we're now looking at is actually two times the size of what it is in real life in relation to that sensor. So let's, uh, let's snap a shot. So just so you can see how unique this lens is, uh, not just as a lens in general, but also for macro, I'm gonna put the 2470G Master on and put the 24 end of that so you can see just how crazy is that this and that are both 24 mil. So this is a 24 mil shot from that exact same spot. <laughs> Very different. Let me go and put it at the closest focus distance and then we can see just how different 24 mil is. So that image right there is our closest focus distance at 24 mil. So it is a very, very different style of lens, that probe lens, but it just goes to show that macro photography can only truly be done with a macro lens. You can do close up photography with anything, but of course, if you really wanna to get to the nitty gritty, get close, get some really fine details, macro lenses are the way to go. From my personal experience, I do really enjoy using the 90mm G. It is a great lens, it is super sharp. So if you're a Sony shooter, that is the one I'd be putting my money into. Now Laowa, who make the Pro Lens, do make a bunch of other macro lenses. Sigma now do a macro, Tekina, I think there's a bunch of other companies, but I would go for the Sony 90mm macro if I was to buy one. If you're gonna buy something else, well, choose something that suits your niche. Anyway, this macro vlog thing is, uh, it's going too long, it needs to, Needs to wrap it up. I'm gonna shoot a few more shots of random things around the house and probably maybe post some on Instagram. I don't know. I don't think that far ahead. Anyway, if you like new music and you like hardcore or metal, Everyone Dies in Utah released a new song today. You should definitely go check it out. Other than that, do the subscribe, comment, like thing and I'll give it a big fat thumbs up. I'll see you next time. Bye.